Hello. Yes. Okay. Everybody can hear me. If I sound a little bit nervous, I look a bit nervous. I am nervous. So this is my first conference talk. So if I look a bit shaky or flaky, bear with me. First, I would like to thank somebody. So doing this talk is actually due to my colleague. It's Kuhn. He gave me the idea of creating this talk. So I would like to thank him. If you want to find him on Twitter, feel free. If you want to do a shout out, feel free. Okay, who am I? So I'm Martin. Uh, you might know me from certain conferences. I'm a freelance software engineer currently working at a company in Belgium called Colright. And um, I'm also a trainer for Totram, together with Dominic and some other people as well. Uh, so we do Angular, tra Angular trainings there. I also recently joined the core team of NGBE, also a very nice conference, which we are in close collaboration with NG Vikings. So if you have the opportunity, make sure to do a visit to Belgium and come to our conference as well. I also like stickers. You can see it from my laptop, of course. If you had the chance to pick up some stickers here at the booth with the small Vikings, um, so I hope everybody, everybody got the chance to take them. Make sure to put them on your laptop. Um, at, some, at some point, they gave me the name Sticker Guy. <laughs> Makes sense. All right, let's talk about decorators. Now, what are decorators actually? So they're a special kind of decoration, and I think everybody already saw them when you're using Angular. And we're using the add annotation there, so it's an X expression. And more or less, it's actually just a function, and it's being executed at the runtime. Right. So we have different kind of decorators that we can use. So we have the class decorator, and it going in conjunction with this, we also have a method decorator. But of course, um, everybody's using Angular, but do you actually know or we're, we're using them like everywhere. We might not even look at it anymore or stand still with it, what it actually does. So as you can see here, so there is a class decorator and it actually adds some metadata to the class so that the heavy lifting is being done by Angular, more or less like also with, with TypeScript, what TypeScript gives us actually. So in conjunction with a method decorator, we can just provide extra information to the method so that we can do certain things when we're actually executing the method or creating an instance of the class. Of course, there are some other decorators as well, property, a param uh, decorator, and an access of proper, uh, decorator. I think the last one is some, some decorator you might not see that often. So with the, decor, uh, the um, param decorator, we already, already use the add inject decorator. I think almost everybody. Then an input decorator, or yeah, the input decorator uh, on your property, everybody uses them, but do you know what it actually does? So that's what we're going to find out in this talk. All right. So if we want to uh, use decorators on our Angular applications or TypeScript applications for that matter, we actually need to do something within our TS config. So we need, uh, we need to tell the TS config that it's an experimental thing because this is not standard JavaScript. It's something that TypeScript provides, provided, is, uh, provides it, uh, it to us. So we need to do some things there. But of course, we're a bit lazy. Angular gives us a, a lot of things right out of, the, out of the back. So we don't actually have to worry about this because Angular CLI got us cover on that one. Also, if you remember, within Angular, type, uh, decorators are used oftenly. So of course, this is something that is being set automatically for you. Right, something very important when you're creating decorators is the order of execution and the order of uh, uh, the process where they are evaluated and the process that how they are called. So if you write multiple decorators, they are called in the, the order that they are shown within your code. But when they are executed, uh, when they are uh, when they are so sorry. So first they are evaluated in the order that you see them in the code, but they are actually called called the other way around, and that's very important because. If you mess up this order or you don't know this order, this might create some weird behavior, maybe. All right. 
So, what is actually a decorator or how can we create it? Yes, as you can see here, it's actually a function and that's pretty great. And we just declare a function and it's using the, uh, the uh, factory pattern as you, might have, as you might have already noticed. So we create a function that returns a function and the return function is actually our decorator. Something very important here, this decorator gets depends on the decorator that you're actually using, gets three params. It's a target, a property key, and a descriptor. And this descriptor is actually where, in most of the cases, the actual power lies. So the target, let's say we are putting a decorator on a method, the target is the actual method that we are putting our decorator on. The property key is the name of the method, and then this descriptor is the, val is the object value of the target. Now, before doing this talk, I never, ever heard about the property descriptor, so I had no idea what it actually did. So I went in looking. Uh, like I already said, it's just a function. Right, the property descriptor. So every object has not only a key value pair, but it also has a, a description of each property. So to put this into code, because yeah, this is just a general, uh, general um, explanation of what this actually is, this might be a little bit easier to understand. So let's see, we created an object, Viking, and if we take out the property, first name, and we would ask for the property description on there, we get four parameters. It's, is it configurable? Is it enumerable? What's the actual value? And is it writable? And within our decorator, we can actually alter those values. So that makes that if you put enumeral to false, and you have an, an array, uh, or you would loop over all those properties, like you would loop over first name, last name, for a year of date, place of birth, and you would put enumeral to false on the first name, then that key would not show up if you would loop over it. So, if you know this, then you can start doing real cool things with it. All right. So, of course, I can talk in theory about this, but I think it's a bit cooler if we can actually see it in action. So, I'm going to not do live coding today. I'm going to do live showing some code and then look at, uh, showing you the applica application. Bear with me here. So, wait. Ooh. Okay. So this is a really, really, really easy application. So what the application actually does, so we have a component that has two buttons. And I want to create a real Viking. And it depends on in which country you actually are born that you can actually be a real Viking. So I can create uh, Leif Ericsson, who has actually be as a real Viking, or I can create me as a Viking, and I don't really know if, I, if that's actually possible. And within our component, and of course, this is like a very basic example, and it's just to actually show what decorators can do, of course, is, yes, I created a method, and I put a method decorator on there to actually provide me with the list of countries that Vikings come from. And when I pass in the country or the place of birth, I actually want to check if it's a real Viking. If it's a real Viking, then I will return all the properties that have been given to me via the, the method. But if not, I want to display something else. And that is, that is actually what the decorator method will do here. So, as said before, it's just a function. So, let's dive into that function. And as you can see, I've created two uh, decorators. So, the first one, is it actually readable for everybody? We need to make it bigger. It's okay? Yeah. All right. So as you can see here, here is my metal decorator, and this is my parameter decorator. So within this function, or these functions, we have the validate country uh, decorator that I created. And as I said before, because you have different types of decorators, we can utilize different things with them. And with the validate country decorator, 
So with the param decorator, I actually want to add something to the metadata. So metadata is something that uh, TypeScript provides to us, and we can actually put certain things on there so we can uh, extract it or view it somewhere else as well. So what this validate country um, function actually does, so it will look for all the parameters that have been prefixed with at validate country. And if that's the case, then it will push this index, the parameter index, to an array. So it will put it on the metadata. Okay, once that is done, when the actual is Viking par uh, decorator is being executed, we can actually check for that. Because as you remember, maybe the order of evaluation and the calling of the function is going the other way around. So once your de decorators have been created, once they are being called, first my parameter decorator will be executed, so that metadata will be set. And then once we get to the method decorator, that data can be used. So I can actually check which parameters have been prefixed with the, uh, with the um, validate country uh, decorator. Still OK there? OK, I'm saying decorator uh, a lot of times. Okay. All right. So this is actually where then the magic happens. And as I said, it's just a function. So here, I'm creating my isViking function, and I'm returning a function. But as you can see, I can provide my function with certain inputs that I like. So you can provide it with the countries. And then the function that I return takes in three parameters, as we saw within the slides. It's a target, a property name, and that descriptor. And again. Very important, that, that one. All right, to get this actually up and running and to make sure that we, we follow a certain way of working, we actually extract the value of that descriptor. And what is the value here? That's the method. So what we can do, we put this in a separate variable. And at the end of everything, if we want, don't want to do anything, we just return it. And we give it the disk context, of course, so it gets all the things that it actually needs. But if we want to do something else with it, then we, can, we, we, we of course, can write our logic in here. So right off the bat, everybody is a Viking. But of course, we want to make sure that if there is a metadata being set that has the check country validator on there, give me all those parameters that have that one. And please also give me the value of them. So what we're actually doing here is checking if any valid uh, if if that validator has been set on any property, and of course if there are any countries defined, and then depending on the index or the index that we actually get, we can get the the arguments that are being passed on to that method, and just check for the value. So that is what's being done here. So we're gonna loop over every country, check if it's in the country, and if it's not then you're not actually a real Viking. So to put this actually in working order, let's see if my thing is up and running. All right. Hmm. So, as you know, that within our code, we will, we will actually show whatever is being passed on, if you're a real Viking. So let's see if the decorator actually works. All right. So when I click on this button, we should actually get all the parameters that are needed to create that actual Viking, which luckily, luckily is. But if I want to create my own as a Viking, and I'm actually born and raised in Belgium, that probably won't work. So when we're doing this, we're actually getting that, mess that message. And I really want to point out here, and that's, that's very important, is you can do a lot of things here. And of course, depending on which type of decorator that you're actually using, you can do certain things here. If you're working with a class, of course, there are other things that can be done here. Uh, a, lo a lot of other examples, 
can give you like if you want to um, console.log certain things, you can use a decorator for that. So, but always keep in mind is just a function. So all the benefits that we get there and all the easy things that we can do there, you can uh, you can do with a decorator. All right. This was my talk. I thank everybody. Slides are on there. The code is on GitHub. Thank you very much. <laughs>